Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 112 of the Above Board podcast. You've got me, one of the co-hosts, John Kennedy, and today we have like our celebrity guest co-host that has had probably more appearances than anyone other than Rich, Matt, or myself, Raina Fitzgerald. Hey. Hi guys. Hey John, how are you? Good. I'm excited to uh, chat with you today, but before I do, I want to ask you a question because I was thinking, like, I always make like funny jokes about the episode number, and we did this like one 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 make a wish last week. <laughs> one twelve was like a huge band when I was a kid. One twelve. Oh really? You know Have you heard of that band before? Absolutely no idea. <laughs> Dang. I feel like rich because like we're you know obviously like rich is older than I am, and so he makes a lot of jokes about like whatever generation he is. Let's yeah. call him a boomer. And I hope he's listening to this because he's going to be offended if I call him a boomer because he's not that old. But like, he always makes these like generational jokes where I'm like, I don't get it. Uh, but I just laugh. I smile through the pain and I'm like, yeah, it's good. Anyway, 112. For the folks listening to this that know who that is. That's, um, I guess up? that's my that's my homework after this. I need to at least listen to one song so that I understand. No, they're, you know, they're I don't good. think so. I don't know. You'll be fine. You might they're not, not like that it. Good. Yeah. It was like a hip hop, like R and B singing kind of band. Like Jagged yeah. Edge. Do you know that name? No. No? Dang. Uh anyway, doesn't well, matter. Let's move right along. <laughs> I was gonna say just wait till you get to episode one eighty two and it's gonna feel real uh, good. <laughs> yes. I think I might have my wife Jackie be a guest on that episode. So she's a huge Blink-182 fan. Uh, Raina knows that, but for the folks that don't, and we go see them as often as we can when they're in town. We're actually seeing them in June, I think. Yeah, so. that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. big Blink fans. So <laughs> what's up? Oh, man. Well, so we only did like a little bit of like an intro before this, but I think John and I know each other too well when we get to talk and we don't stop talking and we always say that should have been a podcast episode. So <laughs> we stopped talking before this, before we got too deep into it and we, we hit record. But I think that what I was saying before slightly to intro is we're catching back up on our word for the year. Gain um, and grounded. Before, yes. Gain and grounded. And I feel like I'm grateful for the fact that we're doing this because it holds me and you accountable to our words. And I have thought about my word a lot and I feel like I keep coming back to it in certain regards. But I also think I want to preface that I haven't had like this groundbreaking, like mind blowing thing about being grounded. I think I've learned couple strengths and a couple weaknesses about myself in it. And I think that's okay. And I don't want to put too much pressure on it in that regard. But yeah. Well, in fairness, so yeah, we did have a little bit of a pre call, but I stopped you when you started saying that. And I did that because what I was going to share next, which I'm going to share now is no one wants to listen to a podcast where someone has everything figured out. Like, I think that's a lot of our journey as we document stuff on this podcast is just like things that we're learning along the way. Yeah. And so, I, A, I wouldn't have expected you in four months to be like, oh, here's this epiphany that I had, and now I'm officially grounded for the rest of my life, and I have it all figured out. I think it's more like learning lessons along the way, maybe some stumbling blocks of like, I wasn't very grounded in that much. Because like for me, you know, my word was, was gain, which was just, what's the word I'm looking for? Bait, I guess. Clickbait. Like it's not, like there's a lot of other words I could use to describe this, but it was really more... To, to sort of focus on the things in my life that are enriching my life and positive in my life and not looking at the gap. So like gap versus gain, like not looking in the rear view mirror or, or not looking ahead and being like, oh, I should be further ahead by now and stressing myself out and benchmarking myself to other people and that type of stuff. So like being in the game and reflecting on what I've done, you know, well, and, and just being like happy about my progress. And one of those things for me is like, I'm really trying to find equilibrium in life. So just, I'm a very stressed person. I talked about this on the podcast last week with Rich. Like, I'm, you know, I'm just high strung sometimes and just trying to be calmer. But I've had tons of stumbling blocks along the way in the last three or four months yeah. in my attempt to doing that. So we're all learning. It's all good. Yeah. Should we start with 
with weaknesses, I always feel like it's like good yeah, to like do that. end on a good note. <laughs> do a SWOT analysis, but we're just gonna we're gonna start with weaknesses. So what 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 did you have in mind? So I feel like when so this whole perception of like being grounded for me has felt like I needed almost like make more space for myself and for things that I love and not filling my time as much or immediately saying yes to things that I'm not so sure about. I mean, we talked about that a little bit on the Gaining Grounded podcast. So if you need to go back and and listen to more of that. But that was episode 101, wasn't it? Yes. yeah, Yeah. First episode of the year. But yeah, so the weakness that I feel like I've found amidst that is when I have more time to myself or maybe not even time just for myself, but things that I'm time with other people or whatever, that's maybe, I don't know if this is the best word, but like more low key, but like, like on the terms of like being grounded, I would love to fill my time which sounds very ironic because I'm not really supposed to be feeling my time. I'm just supposed to like be, but I still think that I can use that time to my benefit. So whether it be hobbies that I know I love reading books, listening to podcasts, watching movies, spending time with Patrick, quality time with Patrick, all these different things. I found that I sometimes get into these moments where I'm just like vegging out more than I am actually like still using the time to my benefit. And I want to just stress on that too. Again, what I said before of like being like, I think you can be and benefit from being rather than like still using that time and like go, 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 go. Cause that's not the point. Like I don't, I'm not trying to go, go, go. I'm trying to use the time to my advantage, but also not trying to exert too much energy and fall into burnout because of that time as well. So I'm trying to use this time to like fill my energy by doing things that I love. You know, that cliche, fill your cup kind of thing. And so, yeah, the thing that I found about myself is sometimes I'm, I'm sitting by myself and I'm, I've tried to dedicate this time to reading a book and then I end up doom scrolling and I'm just sitting there wasting my time away. And I think then I get into this like mental cycle and mental thinking of like, you should be using this time better. Like, why aren't you, why aren't you doing better with this time? Like you're supposed to be grounded. You're supposed to be reaching for the things that are giving you life, not the things that are like, bringing you down or sending you into these pits of nothing. You know what I mean? Like you're not, I I, I could get really redundant with this, but yeah. So using that time versus abusing that time, I think is what I've like found with my weakness and that's it. So I'm, I'm curious how you deal with the emotions that come along with that because for someone like you and and me, and honestly, I think probably anyone listening to this podcast, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably a high achieving personality. You like stacking habits. You like being efficient. You like doing things. Like, I mean, that's that's a lot of our both of our personalities, Reina. Mm-hmm. So I know for me, when I try to, it's funny because our words are different, but a lot of like what we're trying to achieve. Are, are ironically very similar things. And so I'm trying also to not say overly say yes to things and like overcommit myself. I want time for peace and time for for me to reflect on my day or my progress, or whatever. Yet when I do those things, first of all, A, like you can't 24 hours a day can't be like efficiently optimized at all times. Like your your, your mind needs some downtime. And so maybe it morphs into, let's say, doom scrolling. It didn't intend for that to be like that. You just kind of wanted to like mindlessly do something that maybe was entertaining. You know, like maybe you start on like, so like Instagram and you're like scrolling and it was entertaining at first. And then it morphed into this thing that Mm -hmm. sort of took control. And I'm sure at some point you snap yourself out of it, but 
do you, how do you deal with those feelings? Cause I have those feelings a lot where I'm like, so dis- like disappointed in myself. And that's actually something I'm learning is like trying not to be so hard on myself. Like, I can't believe I, I can't, I can't believe I didn't. I went on a walk, but on my walk, I just listened to nature. <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't listen to a podcast about, you know, financial, you know, financial planning or the finance markets. I didn't make a phone call that was work related to like stack these habits. Like I'm working out, like walking and I didn't put my weighted vest on. So like now it was just a waste of time. Like that, that 45 minute walk was nothing. You know, I, I, I get in those habits. So how do you deal with that? Cause I think you probably do too. Like you have this, you start doom scrolling and then you probably start feeling guilty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. My mindset, my unhealthy mindset says, well, we're already this far. You know, mm-hmm. like, ain't no getting out of it. But then I find that when I kind of nip that mindset in the bud, I, I then like my, it's it's so funny like trying to like say your internal dialogue out <laughs> because it's so like all over the place. But when I realize that about myself, if I decide in that moment that I do want to be better and I do want to utilize my time for self-care and some sort of way like rather than doom scrolling or rather than just melting away on the couch or whatever that looks like or for me sometimes it's like reaching for food like you know like there's like different ways that I know are unhealthy for me when I realize that If I decide that day that I'm going to (laughs) be better, it takes me a good like couple of minutes where I like sit in that thought and I'm like, why am I feeling this way? Why? Maybe what caused this? And then I ask myself, like, do I want to be better? If I want to be better, then I need to, I need to reach for other things. Like I shouldn't just reach for the easiest thing. Because that's what it feels like sometimes. It's just easiest to pick up your phone or easiest to grab a snack or whatever that looks like. But it's not so easy to get in my car and go do a walk around the lake, like what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Or it yeah. doesn't feel as easy to set up the meditation stuff to do outside. Like that takes a little bit more effort than just walking to your couch and planting, you know, like. So then I realized these things about myself and how that kind of feels lazy or in a way like a, abusive to m- myself and who I, cause I, I think the biggest thing is like, who do you want to be in six months, a year from now? And like these small habits accumulate to that person. And if I want to stick to being grounded, that the downtime can't just be I keep saying this word, but like vegging out or there's a term right now, a trendy term right now called rotting. Like it can't just be rotting. Like it has to be, it still has to be good for the soul. And something that I feel like, again, using the cliche earlier, will fill my cup, not just drain it, you know? Yeah. I've never heard the term rotting. I think we should make the name of the podcast stop rotting or something I don't know. that's that's i didn't realize that that was even a term and then people call it people call it rot nights which i will say i i do love a planned rot night like if you plan one day where you're just like i've had a hard week a busy week i've given everything and i just need to rot for one night and you allow yourself like a certain time like I believe in that 100% but I don't Mm -hmm. believe in rotting every day at certain points well (laughs) I think that it's relative also because that could be that could be very negative because you could be doing things that are like self-harm things you know alcohol consumption or like you could be you could be rotting and doing bad things or you could also just be like genuinely trying to give your mind and body the opportunity to recover. Yeah. So, you know, what, what came up for me as you were explaining that is, I mean, it doesn't even have to be something as difficult, even though this isn't in theory difficult, but when you're maybe sort of tired and lacking like the energy or the motivation to do it, it is difficult to get in the car, drive over to the park and then walk around the lake. But it could be, 
okay, I'm going to put my phone down and I'm just going to meditate for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Exactly. Like I, I for me, I learn that these last few months or I'm learning is the better word, as we said. Like I was sick over spring break time. <clears throat> and I mean, I work out almost every day. And when I was sick, I was like, I got to go. I got to go for a run. Like I need to go work out. And my body was so tired that I was... I almost couldn't physically do anything besides just lay there and rot away. <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was one of those like, okay, I can't do that. Like it's unhealthy. It, that's actually unhealthy for me to just put force myself through the motions of something. I need to sit here and relax, but I have a choice. I could sit here and like scroll on my phone. And not that this is like a much better substitute, but I watched a movie, which felt kind of nice instead of like scrolling through like 15 second clips, like just watching a movie even. Yeah. So like giving yourself the grace and the space there. I think is is pretty important. And you said a couple of things that I wanted to go back to, you know, just because you on this whole theme of like rotting, <laughs> just because it sounds like such a dirty word. I don't I even know. like saying it. I know. Hey there, you're awesome for tuning into the show. Do you want bite sized daily doses of above board content delivered straight to your Amazon Alexa? Subscribe to Canterpath 365 and enjoy our daily brief featuring market updates, relevant financial news, and mini clips from yours truly on this podcast, as well as Rich and Matt. Visit canterpath365.com to sign up. But, you know, just because you do, let's say, like, one bad habit doesn't mean that it needs to lead to another. Like, you made the comment, like, well, and I've had these thoughts a lot, too. So this isn't you, but this is all of us, everyone listening. Like, you're like, well, I'm already here. I might as well do it. So like, I, I think like, I think of that with like indulging in food or alcohol, like I've already had like, today's my cheat day. I've already had one bad thing. Ah, whatever. It's just, it's one bad day. I'll pick it up tomorrow and start. How many times do we say I'll do it tomorrow. And then by the next day that evening, you know, you're indulging again. And something that I, I, I heard, I think on a, I think from James Clear, who wrote the book Atomic Habits, was like, I'm going to loosely quote it, but it was that one bad habit doesn't mean that it needs to lead to another. Like, like, and you don't have to be so hard on yourself. Like, you, you okay, so you indulged in, in, a, in a dessert. It doesn't mean you need to have, like, all the desserts at the restaurant. Like, you can, in, like, indulge, you did it. It's fine. Like, that's not the end of the world. You can kind of draw a line in the sand and then just make a better choice next time. Immediately. Like immediately you can just start with the next time I eat, I'm going to make a better choice versus just sort of letting go of that decision and being like, yeah, I'm already here. I'll just keep going or, oh, it's vacation. I'll have another cocktail, whatever. What's, you know, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. um, I stopped myself yesterday, dude. I was, we had, we you know, had like all day I was in meetings. You know this. I was in all day and I ended the day at like six o'clock came out to have dinner with the family, poured a glass of wine because I said to myself like, ah, I earned this. I should enjoy this. And I had a sip. Two, I had two sips. And I'm like, this tastes good. But I already kind of like I had a low key headache coming anyway. I'm like, I don't want what's going to come from this. Like it's, this is feels nice to have with dinner, but I don't even want, want what's coming from this. And I poured it back in the bottle. So mm. also if you're a guest in my house in the next week, don't drink that bottle of wine because I drank from it and then poured it back. But like the point was, I just felt like I had a couple of sips, as minor as that sounds. And I just thought to myself, like, I don't know, this is this isn't a good habit. Like this isn't a good habit for my night that I told myself I had a long day and I earned this. Mm -hmm. So I took a couple of sips. I'm like, nah, I'll I'll have one later. I don't know. And I just put it back. So yeah. it's weird. It's with like that type of stuff. Like, I don't know. I, I when I heard that probably a year ago, like one, just because you do one thing, like you can let go of that and it doesn't, doesn't have to be the rest of your story. And I think the other thing too is like, if you start acting like the person you want to become, like you just become that person, like you start doing those habits, you know? So I think that's, that's another thing that comes up for me with that. But what do yeah. you think? Before, before we move on to yours, cause I still want to hear about yours, but last thought huh. on mine, I hear the word choice comes up a lot between your yours and I's conversation. And that led me to think about your intention of your choice. Like what, 
or the intentionality behind your choice. And I think that that's the thing that I'm learning within the weakness that I find in myself is like, like you said, like in your day and have a glass of wine, but what's your intentionality behind it? Where's your heart in it? Like, are you having a glass of wine because you want to celebrate and you're with people that you love and care and whatever? Are you having a glass of wine because, because of the alternate reasons of hurting yourself or, you know, going down a bad path. Same thing goes for my, my things that I was talking about before, whether it's planting myself on the couch and, and whether it be like scrolling through my phone or just like sitting and doing nothing. Like, am I doing this because like you said, entertainment, what's the intentionality behind it? Do I need a little bit of entertainment to cool off whatever from the day? Or is my, the intention of my heart or my choice behind it because I just want to sit here and rot and I don't want to think about anything. I don't want to think about my day. I don't want to be self-aware about my day. I don't want to talk to other people. So I think that's the thing. I think it's, I think it's really like, where's your heart behind it? Where's your intention behind your choice? But that ultimately we, we do have the choice. And I think the thing that I struggle with is it's like, it's like the choice comes up in my brain. It's like, accept or deny. <laughs> and I, I'm going to be honest, like I deny it. Like sometimes I'm like, I would rather just sit here and waste away. And I think that that comes with certain days, but I think knowing that I have the choice and then there are days where I press accept and I'm like, yeah, I think this mm-hmm. would be better for me today to go and do a 20 minute Pilates and get out of this, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes get out of our, our brains and our minds. So yeah, we're working on it. How about you? I do, I do a, I do do a small (laughs) hack that to get out of that mindset. I think I got this from Mel Robbins or some famous person that talks about this all the time, but when you're doom scrolling or you're just like stuck in it and then there, there comes this moment where you consciously realize it Mm -hmm. and you think to yourself, what, what am I doing? but you're still so stuck in it that you don't stop. You just kind of keep doing it. And the quote that I heard from her and I do this and it's so great. And I have Matt, Matt does this too. I think sometimes he says he does stop and you count backwards. You go five, four, three, two, one, set it down, walk away, whatever, like for whatever it's becomes this like anchoring thing or grounding thing where now every time you do that, you say that internal dialogue to yourself, five, four, three, two, one, and then snap out of it. <laughs> like, yeah. It becomes this anchoring thing where now when you do that, you know, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. And it's been, it, that's been cool for me specifically on social media, which I've struggled with. I shared this on the podcast. Like I logged out of the apps. And so just because I don't well, I want to add a little bit of friction between me and like the access to just doom scrolling or whatever, whatever yeah. the case is. But I love, I love having, this is what I love about the podcast is we get to have conversations like this. And I think people that listen to it, identify. these are just struggles. Like we all deal with, I think people identify with it, but the world society has very much normalized these things. Like "Mm, I had a bad day. I'm going to have a a glass of wine, glass of wine turns into two, two turns into a bottle. Like, you know, like alcohol, for example, is very normalized in our culture. It's just like a commonly accepted thing that we do. Same with social media. Like no one would think that this is, like we use the term self-harm a few times. Those things innocently enough don't sound like self-harm because they never start out that way or that's not the intent of it. But like really you're just, it's like escapism almost, you know, you're trying to escape whatever it is. And so I love what you said about choices and thank God you said it because that's a much better, you came up with a much better title, which is the intention of your choice. That's going to be the title of this podcast. Way better, way better (laughs) title. So I'm glad that, I'm glad that you shared that, but yeah, these are all like real deal things that everyone has mm-hmm. to experience and deal with. So it's fun yeah. stuff to fun stuff to talk about. Good stuff. Let's go. Let's talk about you. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know okay. what that means, but We're... I mean, I'm a I'm a constant learning and progress. Yeah. Like, imagine the app where it just says loading. Like that's me. I'm just yeah. constantly. Well, if, if, if we're talking about, if we're talking about weaknesses, where we're at with our words and 
maybe where we've come back from them. Where do you feel like you're at right now with your gain thinking? Do you feel like maybe you do tend to still lean towards gap thinking? Are you like where, where I want to, <laughs> this sounds terrible. I want to know your weakness. Let me know. Yeah. No, <laughs> know that's fine. I'm, I'm an open book. <laughs> I've shared a lot on this podcast. Yeah, I do. I think everyone does. That's, that's probably pretty normal. I don't think I'm like this overtly negative person. In fact, I would say I tend to lean more positively, but my internal dialogue, it's just, it's easy. It's easy to go gap thinking. It's easy to go negative thinking. It's easy to say like, oh man, I should be further along in whatever it is. Like you're fit, like a fitness journey or progress or a career progression or whatever. And so what I love about us recording that podcast at the beginning of the year was it's just one of those, there's, there's a different level of intentionality behind it when you put it out there and you see it. So even for like, it was kind of fun for me that week when we were sharing it on our social media and stuff that it's like, I saw, it was like reaffirmed, like, yep, that's what I'm working towards. That's what I'm working towards. And I have it written down. I have the book, the gap in the gain here. Like I, I, I almost, I see it and I've purposefully put it in my, in my line of focus Mm -hmm. so that I'm constantly reminding myself of, of this journey that I'm on. And so, you know, I would say, I would say that's one of the benefits of sort of stating that out there and and writing it down, you know, visualization, whatever you want to call it, like there is real power to this stuff. But as far as weaknesses go, it's, it's very easy to slide back. It's super easy to, 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 to think like for me, this is weird, but when I go, when I go negative or I go in gap thinking, I then turn it into how do I, how do I play catch up? Like, how do I get, like, how do I, and I, I, I don't know. It's just like, it's like a, I don't want this to sound like a humble brag or anything like that. It's going to come off weird, but I'll just go into like overdrive mode. Like I'm going to work harder. I'm going to outwork the problem. I'm going to go exercise. You know, I'm feeling bad about, I joked about this last time, but like, how do you know if someone's done 75 hard, you don't know, they'll just tell you that they've done it. So, you know, like you look back and you're like, man, I was in like peak physical condition a year and two years ago when I completed 75 hard. I'm not feeling that way anymore. Let me go in overdrive and like get it back. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, game thinking is stopping for a moment and going, gosh, that was great progress. I was in the worst shape of my life in 2020 and earlier, and I got in great shape and I'm still in great shape. So it's like, I don't need to be so hard on myself and do all these crazy workouts. I'm just picking on that. That's like an easy one. I think a lot of people could connect to with like fitness, you know, everyone, everyone's on a fitness journey. We only, we only got one body, so we got to take care of it. But so it's easy to do, to do those things. I try to stop myself because I still do that. Like I still, like my wife will be like, are you supposed to not, like one of my goals as a result of this was to stay like zone two workouts or below, which is basically just a way to describe like not getting your heart rate above a certain threshold. And like, she'll drive home and see me running in the neighborhood. And she's like, what are you doing? Like, like your heart rate looks like you're. You're like reaching for air with your breaths as I see you running. Like it looks like you're like 180 heart rate. And I'm like, I know. Cause I'm still like, I, I like that, but I have to stop and remind myself, let's not do those things. So that's, that's probably the, that's the struggle. The the struggle is, I mean, it's, you're up against inertia when you're trying to change your, I don't even know what the right word is. Physiology. Like you're trying, like you're trying to change everything about how you, do stuff. And it's sort of a shift of your identity a little bit. And so what I what I have to keep reminding myself too is what got you there won't won't get you to where you're going. Like what got you there will keep you there. So, you know, you gotta we're all trying to evolve and learn. And I think that's probably the biggest thing for me, if that makes sense. Yeah. I I resonate with the like looking back on peak physical performance because I a year ago I was doing like CrossFit style workouts and now I'm just doing, I shouldn't say just doing, but it's very different now. Like I was climbing rope climbing and, you know, doing like certain Olympic lifting and all these different things like peak strength. 
And now it's very much just like, not just, <laughs> now it's very much bike, like more like cardio, but like low impact cardio, things that I know aren't going to like exhaust the tank. And it reminds me of when I was at Vital Fitness, the gym that I used to go to, I still love them a lot. I love the coaches that I had. They're the best coaches ever. And one of my coaches used to tell me, um, you need to see your different exertions, mental, physical, and emotional in three different buckets. And if you had one bucket of water to fill up each one of those, you're never going to have them at a hundred percent all at one time. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to have maybe, maybe it's one day, maybe it's one week, maybe it's one month or a year that physical is like max 80%. Like you're just up here. And that doesn't even Mm -hmm. sound, that sounds crazy. I know someone like you is probably like, no, it has to be a hundred. It can't just be Mm -hmm. 80. But then you also have like mental, physical, and emotional are one package. They're not like this separate thing. So they are those equal a hundred percent. So in order to be able to give to all three buckets, you have to, you know, span it out based on what your, your body and your mind and your heart can actually do at that time, Mm -hmm. whatever the length of time. So I always love that because it, it helps me stay grounded and knowing that even though physicality isn't high right now, it doesn't mean it's nothing. It just means I'm, I'm giving more to other spaces that need it more, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do. And I think something I've learned is rhythm or balance for me anyway. And I think for a lot of people in life is recognizing that they're not going to be all an equal plane. Like those three buckets are not going to be all filled a third, a third, a third. There are times where there's seasons in life where you have to sprint in your career. And the unfortunate byproduct of that is other aspects of your life not fall by the wayside, but they just not everything can be a priority. You know, if you're trying to juggle 10 things in life, your career and vocation, your spiritual growth and faith, your family and kids, your spouse your fitness, your like, I mean, there's so many in this wheel of life, there's so many things you can't, if everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. So I recognize for sure, there are these sprints that I do, where I don't know, I that's like, a that's, I'm glad you said that, because that's a weird recognition for me too in, in this whole journey of gain thinking is like, that's just kind of how I'm wired. Like Matt always talks about being balanced, and just more even keel in this like steady way. It's like, this is a stupid analogy, but because it's finance and we talk finance a lot, I'm going to use it this way. It's like slow and steady market returns to get to the same outcome. But for me, it's like there's market volatility along the way, but we ultimately maybe hopefully land in the same place. But I, I'm willing, like, I like that. Like I balance for me, I'm learning is, is that life is not always balanced. And I like the sprints that come with different areas of my life. And then, I get to stop that for a moment and like the summertime, I want to take some trips with the kids and stuff. And so maybe overworking now to be able to have some of that space with my family later. So I don't know. I think that's man. Life's a journey, man. Wow. This is, this is who would have thought we started this. And I think you thought this was going to be like a seven minute podcast (laughs) and look at us 35 minutes later. I said, I have nothing to give. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I almost just so for everyone listening, I almost made Raina stop before we started walk out of her room and come back in because that's what you started with. You're like, I don't know what we're going to talk about. I'm like, we got this. We got this. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would have still been good, a short one, but I mean, you never know what conversations will come. I should have just known that our conversations are always (laughs) this grand. (laughs) <laughs> the the intention of your choice yeah. I love it any parting words of wisdom for along your journey for our listeners I I think that okay so there was one question that you had prefaced before that I just want to say and maybe it's words of wisdom maybe it's just matter of fact but 
one of your questions that you had sent me was, is there something that you're doing in daily practice, something of the sorts that's helping you stay grounded? And mine's not like journaling or anything like that. I don't, I honestly don't love daily practices because then I have, I feel like I have this pressure on myself to do the daily practice. And if I don't do it, I'm letting myself down. And so I try not to do that. But the things that I do stick by that come pretty natural to me is using my calendar, like my Google calendar. And so in my Google calendar, every time somebody asks me if I can hang out, for example, I'm like, hang on, (laughs) let me check my Google calendar. And it's not to check if I have a day or time available. It's to first check how my week looks for myself and the boundaries that I've set for myself. It's not like, where can I squeeze you in? It's where can we find a time that is not overdoing it for myself in the future, in the near future, whatever. And even recently, I had to tell somebody, and it was so hard for me, it was so hard, but I had somebody reach out to me and they were like, hey, I want to hang out. We've been wanting to hang out for a while. And community is really big for me. Like I love spending time with people. I love making time for people and getting to know their story and things of those sorts, or just catching up with old relationships and staying up to date. And so this person had reached out to me and we had been wanting to hang out for a while. We just let it go by the wayside. And uh, she reached out a couple weeks ago and I had to tell her, I was like, I'm so sorry, but I know this is going to sound crazy, but I don't think we're going to be able to hang out till like June or July. I know that sounds crazy because I don't have kids. Like I have a husband, but like people just don't think, you know, whatever that you make time for your husbands or your wives. I know it doesn't look like I have a lot of responsibilities, but I do. And I also need to like, like, this is, this is not something I say to people, but like, just like a short disclaimer to myself is I need to make sure I have time for myself throughout these weeks. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not like filling time nowadays. It's more so checking where's my time and where's my time for quality time with people that I know I love and care and want to keep up relationships for first. And I know it sounds, maybe it's just me. It sounds so terrible. Like that, like, like that saying that out loud, like hurts me, like having to like say no to people or not yet, or like, we'll hang out later is so difficult. So I'm learning. Well, that's because you're a people pleaser. That's yes, that's very true. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's not like, I think, I think that's, that's actually a good evolution of, of this, of this learning journey that we're on is maybe being able to confidently say no without, and I'm saying this out loud for me, confidently say no without being apologetic or feeling bad. Yeah. Because there is a, there is a difference, but like a lot of times I always, I mean, I, I recognize this too, like, especially someone that has access to my calendar, like internally on the team, let's say, where you can see my calendar. If I, it, it's like, just because I'm physically available in that time slot, or it doesn't appear that I have anything going on that evening, does not mean I've got the emotional capacity and energy to do whatever's being asked of me. And yeah. so that took me a long time to learn that about myself, that I might not actually have something physically stop, physically booked stopping me from hanging out with this person or doing X, Y, Z, but my energy levels are important to me. And when I say yes to everything, I just get just exhausted. I'm an introvert. That's tiring for me. And so that I had to learn that. And I'm still learning that by the way, but that's what you just said. I think everyone's listening to this going like, yep, I get that too. Like I, I definitely get that. I feel bad saying no to family or saying no to a friend or like, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I'm not available till June or July. It's like, I get that. I get that. The diff, the funny thing is though, it depends on who you tell because like, if you said that to me, like, if I don't know, if we we're like, our families are trying to plan something and you said that, I'd be like, yeah, I totally understand. Like I, yeah, yeah you wouldn't even have to be apologetic. I'd be like, yep, no, I totally get that. Whereas I know that feeling where you tell someone that you, you almost like tiptoe into it. Cause you feel like, yeah. you know, you're going to disappoint them and you don't want to. Yeah, It's hard for a people pleaser. It is really hard, but I am, I do want to like, 
pat myself on the back because I have gotten so much better at it. And it has become a little bit more natural, exactly what you're saying. Like, I will find myself maybe trying to explain myself at times when I say no or not right now. But then I'm like, why am I sorry? (laughs) I'm not sorry. Like, and that's, that's also like a woman thing too, like being sorry about things that I have no reason to be sorry about and, and learning to nip that in the butt as well. Like, no, you didn't do anything. Like, that's just, this is just what it is. So I've gotten a lot better at that, although still learning because my natural tendency is like you said, people please and to say yes and to be there and to show up. And so, you know, I think we can do both, but in a, in a healthy capacity. So I love it. That's just great awareness. And I think that ties into, as we're wrapping the show, the quote that you said, which is the intention of your choice. I mean, that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing. I love it. So, well, everyone, thanks for hanging with us today on the above board podcast, episode 112. Go check out 112 if you haven't heard of them. And, uh, we'll, (laughs) we'll see you guys next week. We enjoy doing these episodes and we're coming at you every week, every Wednesday. See you next time. Take care.